How fast could you animate if you could control your characters as if it was a video game? Imagine just pressing hotkeys on your keyboard and moving your mouse to make your character come alive. You could even throw in face motion capture to control the expressions of your character with your face. If this sounds too good to be true, let me tell you, in the new update Cartoon Animator 5.3, that's exactly what you can do. In this tutorial, I'm going to create myself as a character inside Cartoon Animator, and I'm going to animate it super quickly in a matter of seconds in real time using motion capture to animate the face and also using the triggers with the puppet stage. Let's get started. To create the character super fast without spending too much time, I will be using a paid character, the Vector Buddies. But if you want to follow along, you can apply the same technique that I'm gonna use by going to Pack, Free Resources, and then get any character that you want from there. You should have enough content that you can play with if you only have Cartoon Animator 5. But for the style I'm going for, I will be using the Vector Buddies. I just go to Template, and then Item, Actor, I open it, open human, scroll down and select Harry front. I click and drag. And in here, what I want to do is just change the face so it has attributes of my face, like the beard, the eyeglasses, etc. So for that, I go to composer mode and then launch on PSD. My PSD editor is Photoshop. You can follow along in any other type of software Affinity Designer, Krita, any other, even free PSD editors. I will use Photoshop. I click Launch, and once I'm there, I create the eyeglasses quickly in Fast Forward. Then I select one eye to locate it in the Layers panel, and then I just put the layer above the eye. I do the same with the other glass. Then in order for Cartoon Animator to recognize this, I need to put them in a folder. I'm using the same name as the layer. Then I remove the hair, and then in fast forward, I draw the beard. I like to have it in three layers. I like to have center and then one side and the other side. That way I can control it better when I'm setting it up for 360 head creation. Then I recolor the clothes. For this, I like to isolate each part of the body so I can make sure it's being colored properly. Then I do the legs quickly in fast forward and then the arms. Then I change my mind and preferred a darker color for the coat. And then finally, I just color the shoes and we are done. I go back to Cartoon Animator and in Composer Mode, I go to the Layers panel and find the beard. Then I just click on the mask in the face for each part of the beard. That's those three. So now we just need to do some changes for the 360 head. I just click Setup 360 Head. All I do is reposition the eyeglasses for each angle. I'm doing this in Fast Forward. So the eyeglasses move with the eyes angle by angle, view by view, each of the eight points. And if I do a little preview, you can see that the eyeglasses are now working for every head movement, but not the beard, right? Now I just need to do the same for the beard. But for this one, I will use the deform tool and apply this for every single angle. Again, in fast forward. And now I can do a test and I can see that this character is perfectly ready. Look, it's rotating very nicely, right? Yes, he marks, digital mark says yes, yes. Anything you, you want to add? No, perfect, look at that. So I press space, I close this, then I click to go back to stage mode. In stage mode, I will set up a scene by clicking and dragging props from the content panel. Let me close actor, then go to props. I'm going to open that. Make sure you are in item, not on pack. Instead, you are in item, then props. I open props again, scroll down, select stage. And in here, I'm going to add this one for the background. In fast forward, I'm also going to add the podium and then the curtain. And as easy as that, we have everything ready. Now, for people interested in animating really fast, you can use motion capture. Let's set this up really quickly by going to Plugin, Motion Live, 2D, and then click here. This won't work if you don't have these two profiles. Those are paid profiles. So this is only a good investment that makes sense only if, one, you can afford it, and two, if you want to save time in animation. 
So now I will set it up with my cell phone. I'm going to be using my phone and I need to download the app Live Face. That is free. Okay, so in here, I have the iPhone right here. And if I tap on this on the screen of the iPhone, you can see that it shows the mesh. And up here, you can see that there's a number. That's the IP address that in the computer, I need to input right here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tap. Usually, I leave this wireframe on. And you can see how precise it tracks my mouth movements, my eyebrows, etc. I think this is really good. But now I need to connect it. So I'm, for this tutorial, I'm going to leave it off. Let's go to input that number in here. I'm just going to do that in fast forward. There you go. And then I click on iPhone to where it says connect and look at uh, live face. I press connect. Boom, it says it's now connected. Now, why can't I preview it? Because nothing is set up to control the face. I need to click here, select gear, and I have the face 3D, that's for the webcam, but the one I'm using right now, it's the iPhone. So I just select it, and now I can control. I am now going to activate the wireframe, and then preview, press space, and look, now I'm moving the character. If I also want to move the body, like if I move like this, I, it's only rotating the head. So if I also want to move the body, I need to copy this. Let me, I have to disconnect it first. Select all of this, control A, copy, and then paste it here. And then connect it again, and then connect it again. I mean, connect the body and set the controller for body. There it is. Now, if I press preview, I press space. And now if I move, it also moves and it can also go in and out. That is something that you can have if you want. But for my case, I'm going to leave it off. So I'm just going to turn it off. There you go. And that's it. Now to set up the puppet stage, I just go to click on where it says puppet stage, click there. And then in here, you can just click and drag animation clips. For that, I go to item, open animation. And then the ones that I like are motion, human, elastic folks, front. Look, just click and drag. I'm just going to be clicking and dragging a couple of these in fast forward. And you can see that it automatically assigns a shortcut in here. You can just double click and change it to anything you want. I'm going to leave it on R, right? And if I press preview and then I press the keyboard, the space, Look, I'm pressing E, I'm pressing R, and it, it does all of that. Now, if I want this to be looping, I can just click on the loop function right here, and it will keep doing it again and again, right? The same with all of them. I'm activating that, and look, press space. I press W, and it does that, and then E, and then R, and it does it forever and ever. Now, what if I activate the motion pilot? I click to activate and then click on motion pilot to select the settings, disable the face, close it, and now I'm ready. Look, I press, for example, R, and I can be moving my mouse, right? This is pretty cool. Now, if I want this to be surrounding, the, running around that podium, you can see that in here it's supposed to be in front, but it's in be, behind. I need to change a setting in motion pilot. I just add this, a one on the Z axis. Whenever I move the mouse up and down, it will change the Z. And the Y axis, it will only move 0.5. Now look at this. I press space, press R, and look at that. I can now go back and forth, right? Now this background, I, I need the background to be a little bit more behind. Let's change this to minus 300. I think that that should work. Let's try this again really quick and look at this. There you go. Now I can be kind of dancing around this thing. But I want to do a couple of modifications. One is that I cannot control the face with motion capture because the clip is taking over the head. And the other thing is I don't like the bounciness. I think it's too bouncy. So I'm going to remove the FFD is just for the style of animation that I'm going for. So for that, I'm going to create those clips, but I will show you how I create the first one. 
step by step, and then I will just repeat the process, okay? Let's see how we do this. To customize, I need to start adding motion clips that I'm going to customize, and then I'm going to combine in this panel. I scroll down to where I can see stand one and stand three. So I select the character and then double click on stand one. There it is. And then I'm going to open the timeline and with the character selected, I click on object related track and then I click on motion. And also I'm going to click on FFD. So I have this clip. I'm going to select the FFD and delete it. Let me go to the end of that clip and then I scroll down and select stand three. Double click and now those two will be one clip. So I'm going to select this and delete it. You can scroll in and back when you press alt and then you scroll the mouse and then alt click and drag to move the timeline. So now I go to the end of the clip and all of this animation is what I want to capture in a single clip. Now, if I save this as a custom clip, what's going to happen is that all of this, it's going to record like 2000 frames. I don't want that. I only want to focus. Let me zoom in a little bit in here, right there, just to make sure I'm on the ending frame. There you go, that one. Then I scroll back and then I'm going to click on the top, you see it says set end frame. I click there and then I'm going to click on custom. And of course I already have these ready. So I'm just going to select, uh, create a new one just to show you. I press save and then I'm going to make sure that I'm not saving the actor. What I want to be saving, let me cancel, is the animation. So instead I click on animation and then I click save and you can see that now in here it says animation and this will be stand. And then this is the one that I use for the recording. I press OK and that records that one. So all you do is do the same for all the ones. Remember, you just add the clip and then you remove the FFD if you want and then put your mouse on the end, not here, but here. And then you click and set end frame right there and just go to custom, select animation and then save it with any name. And with that, we are ready. Now I can hide. I'm going to delete all of these. Let me just select this and also delete all. Actually, right click and then remove object animation. There you go. Now I can close this and you will see that I went ahead and already have these, right? So all I do is go to puppet stage and then I'm going to just add all of those. I just click and drag each one in fast forward and then I just like to organize them like this. But for these ones, I'm going to double click and then press A, double click S, double click D. And with that, we are almost ready to record. If I go to plugins and then motion live and then motion live, you can see that lip sync is available on motion live but if I open Puppet Stage and then I click on Motion Cap, which is disabled right now, you can see that, hey, Lip Sync is not available. Even if I connect this and then I, I'm going to look to the screen that I'm going to be looking. I said zero pose, not dire looking directly to the camera, but looking to where I'm going to normally be looking and then zero pose. That's going to be the center of my character. And so if I have everything ready, the lip sync won't be controlled. Why? Because it needs to be controlled by the puppet stage right here. I click here and then the one that I always recommend is the first option, which overrides. If you have another clip that uses the lips, it will stop animating the lips of the motion clip and you will control it always with your camera, right? So I press OK for that option and now is having it there. So when I record, it will also record the audio. Now there's another thing. If I click on motion, you can see that the Z axis is disabled. If I press preview and then space and then move like this, do you see that it's supposed to be in front, but it's not? Now I select back the character, open the puppet stage, preview. And look, uh, right now it's not doing anything. I go to motion 
the motion pilot, and then this will be one set to X to Y. So when I move up and down, it will also move backward and forward, like towards the camera and behind, and it will limit the amount of Y that I do, the movement, the vertical movement. Look, now I can move the character around the podium with those settings. Do you see? So now we are ready. I make sure the motion cap is all ready. Let's connect it. Very good. And then activate it here. Let's set the motion cap. Yep, it's activated. And then I activate the microphone with the first option. And we are set. Woo! So I press record and space. And now I can be talking. And you can see that this character is doing a little bit of the lip sync, etc. And then I press W and I can start rotating around this. And also I can do this little celebration, dancing to this side, dancing to this other side. And then I can jump into the, the podium. Let me just try. Boop. Uh, bah, there you go. And then I can jump back. Boop. There you go. So that's pretty cool. And also I can do like this split. Woo. Woo. Really nice. And then I can be dancing around. And that's it. And then to stop, just press space. And then it stops the animation. And if you want to learn more, just go to help. And then video tutorial. And that loads the cartoon animator tutorials. And you can learn more about all the different topics. So that's it. I'm looking forward to seeing your animations. Take care.